are locked. Hello there. You find us today in the Signal Wire podcast studio, and we're here chatting with James Bodie and Andy Abramson. How are you guys doing today? Let's start with you, James. Oh, I'm exhausted. I'm also in the world's messiest back cave because this is this would appear to be the only place in my 450 year old house that I get a half decent uh, back hall out of here. So I apologise for the mess in here. I, I, it's um, not so, okay. mess, so much messy, James, as productive. It looks as if it's the sort of place where work gets done. Yeah, all kinds of toys in here. You wouldn't believe what I got in here. But anyway, it's good to be here with you, David, and with you as well, Andy. Yeah, it's great to have you along. And uh, you're you're in England, Andy, uh, not Andy, um, James. I'm in Brazil. And where about are you today, Andy? I'm in the US as always. Obviously, you can't be traveling that much, which is quite rare for me because, you know, Facebook lets me see where I've been the last 12, 13 years. And usually about this time, I'm somewhere we're closer to James and visiting either the UK or France or Portugal. But with what's going on with the COVID-19, there is no international travel. Heck, there isn't even domestic travel. And though James' office may look quite crowded, there's probably a lot of creativity going on there, which is why he has to have a little bit of this bit and a little bit of that bit to do all of his things. Uh, we've been going back and forth on dangerous demos for the last few weeks, and it's quite going to be quite the event it certainly is you mentioned the reduction in travel and of course that's why we've got cluecon deconstructed going to be online this august 4th to the 6th and a, a key part of that is the dangerous demos and i think i'm right in saying that this will be the first time ever that the dangerous demos event itself has been an online event james is that correct yeah it's the first time that we've done all of the demos remotely and compared the whole thing remotely as well uh, we have had a number of remote demos in the past but hmm. this uh, is a new chapter in the history of dangerous demos we've never tried this one before yes as a matter of fact don't... guys it may be a dangerous demo unto itself <laughs> i'm sure it will be anything might happen in, in a meta kind of way yes of course dangerous demos has always had the remote component of somebody like andy smith been back at base setting up the scoring system and things like that and and more recently as you mentioned James there's been the occasional contributor who's come in remotely I remember didn't Nia famously come in from a toilet in Heathrow or something like that he certainly did and uh, we almost had one from who was it Mosha was going to do a demonstration from a forest about 150 miles away from from uh, Clucon uh, entitled dial one to detonate he went, he's gonna blow <laughs> he's gonna blow something up something very large in the middle of a forest um yeah. and but luckily luckily unfortunately oh we weren't able to do that because he wasn't able to find a, a reliable mobile signal would you believe yeah, it in, indeed you, the, the element of danger uh it is a kind of a variable thing in dangerous demos some have no physical danger whereas others have uh, uh, a load of physical danger i've just realized we're talking about dangerous demos as if everybody knows exactly what we're talking about but there could be people who have never been to clucon or astricon or Kama ilio world before and have not seen them so james i wonder if you could give people a, a beginner's guide an every man's guide or a, a, a layman's guide to dangerous right. demos before we carry on well dangerous demos is a wonderful way of showing how capable you are to everybody else to all of your peers um it's all about putting on a short punchy uh entertaining energizing electrifying demonstrate demonstration lasting no more than three minutes it's going to be something that will excite your peers and hopefully they'll learn from it. Um, and if you are successful, you will end up with one of the famous, the, the coveted dangerous demo trophies, which are three, they, they consist of a lead crystal trophy 
which is printed on the inside uh, with 3D engraving. So very, very sought after. Um, yes, a, a very nice thing to have. And of course, there yeah, are a yeah, number. You, you, yeah, you have to work very hard to get one, don't you, David? I, I have worked hard in the past and got one at a ClueCon uh, for a, a demo that involved free switch and asterisk. But uh, that, that was in the past. There are a number of different categories. And uh, Andy, you're, you're going to be on the judging panel. And uh, I've enjoyed seeing you judging various events over the years, sometimes more sternly than others. And I'm thinking of the startup camps and things that mm -hmm. I've seen you judge where I can tell that you're not suffering fools gladly. But of course, on the dangerous demos, it is, you know, part of the fun is the, the do or die kind of mentality. Uh, what, what sort of things do you look for in a dangerous demo? Well, when you think about startup camp, there's a difference between judging a competition which is designed to speak to future success of a business. And oftentimes ideas that are presented at, say, a startup camp or a demo type of event from years gone by was really, do they have a business model? Do they have an audience that, that do they have a solution that meets a problem that exists or do they have a solution in search of a problem? A lot of times people present ideas that are just simply rehashes of old ideas or a feature becomes a business where one feature of a service becomes a runaway business they think not realizing that the already existing user group or user audiences doesn't have any reason to switch but mm. dangerous demos it's more about creativity and the opportunity to make something work and i, I some of the the great demos that i've seen I mean, last year, Abby Minasali did a really fun one, but um, there's um, Ben from um, Something Lingo, who has yeah, done ben some, Klang. yeah, Ben Klang has done some really creative solution demos. I remember one where if he did it right, it called his wife. If he did it, he called his, if he did it wrong, his girlfriend called his wife, <laughs> and that was a runaway hit. There was another one, um, I'm not sure whether it was last year or the year before, where somebody embedded on a Raspberry Pi device a complete PBX and then wrapped it in bubble wrap and was throwing it around. And well, being the former volleyball player and soccer player of my youth, the first thing I did was an overhand serve across the room. And then I looked and did a drop kick of the ball, the way you would kick a, a, a ball, a goaltender would kick the, the, the soccer ball up the field. Yeah. And I think I almost took off somebody's head with that one as it was not on the way up, but on the way down. But it got quite a lot of, of, of attention, which was the idea. But at the end of the day, the demo worked because the PBX was still working after the overhand serve and after the football style soccer goalie kick. Yeah, and, and you've actually... Yeah, what, what, whilst all that volleyball was going on, they were actually configuring the PBX. And the demo ended with everybody joining uh, a multi-way conference call through that PBX. Which yeah, on the, on that very stuck. unit. And, 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 on, uh, on the hotel Wi-Fi as well. It's just uh, so unrehearsed, so risky, but it worked. Yeah, and, and both of you have uh, contributed to the description of a demo which inherently wasn't particularly deeply technical in and of itself, but it proved a point. And I think that's one of the great things about the dangerous demos. Some of them are very, very involved and have lots of moving parts and bits of code, even on different servers that people access. But some of them uh, just have a more entertainment value. And Mark Crane's Fusion PBX running on a Raspberry Pi Zero in a load of bubble wrap being drop kicked or, kicked or thrown around the room is uh, a very good example. Andy, you mentioned Ben Clang from Mojo Lingo. I think while we obviously have to credit uh, Honorable Brit James Bodie with the popularization of the dangerous demos, it, it, its origins actually lay with people like Ben Klang and Tim Panton. Uh, ben doing demos where physical danger was involved and Tim Panton doing danger, dangerous demos, which were so convoluted and had so many parts that might not join together that there was a good chance that the danger was they might just not work at all and crush and burn. Um, but I, I, remember these, uh, one, I remember a Tim Panton demo of of a um, remote island MVNO mobile network where he was going to take use of public spectrum and bring it all together. Tim Tim does conjure up some of the most 
interesting ideas, whether they are practical or not is a different story. Uh, my whole involvement with Dangerous Demos began when James Bodie and James Tagg were at Trufo. And the idea was to roll out ideas and we would bring the clue we would bring the true phone clan to cluecon and then take it elsewhere and that's really the the whole genesis of this idea going back now eight years and many demos and a lot of companies have crashed and burned mm. you know and i think to james's credit he's kept this alive long after his um departure from true phone and his new venture that he's doing but the reality is that many people try and fail. It's only the really, it, it, it's not really just the fact that you pull off your demo. James is a very tough grader. I mean, you don't get the trophies just because you show up. Quite the opposite. It has to work. It has to be inventive. And it has to be in someday practical. It can't just be an idea that has no audience that no one would ever use. There are companies that would show up and do things and you'd sit back and go, um, but where are you going to use that? Or how are you going to deploy it? It just doesn't work. I think there was one from flow route that just didn't go anywhere. Then other people will do remote control of a vehicle, you know, like a little moving car. Oh, mm -hmm. great. Nice. But the fact that you did it using free switch or signal wire kit or using some other open source stuff, that's nice. But do you really need it? <laughs> well, of course, you said that they need to work, Andy. And of course, to win in certain categories, they do. However, there is a special category for people that fail. And the prize is awarded to the person that, or the demo that fails most spectacularly. I'm talking of none other than the crash and burn prize. Indeed, um, always very popular. The great thing about Crash and Burn is it takes away some of the, the pain of, uh, of, of totally losing face. In fact, do you remember that brilliant, wonderful, glorious Crash and Burn when the famous, the internationally renowned Mr. Phil Zimmerman, uh, the fifth most important person on the planet in the world of computers, according to Mr. Phil Zimmerman, um, did a demonstration of his uh, his latest secure phone, and it went terribly. Um, and we got it all on video. But at the end, he got the crash and burn prize. So in the end, he was happy, going around, "Oh look, look what I've won!" <laughs> yeah, but but so, James, uh, he's never he's never returned to Klucon again, and you know. <laughs> Yeah, but everybody enjoyed it. It was absolutely wonderful. It was he was really amazing. getting he was getting animated while being frustrated. And it could have just been the hotel Wi-Fi. I mean, years ago I used to co-host with um, Ken Rakowski during our uh, tech our, our our Ken Radio and Tech Talk era. I used to uh, do an event with him every year called Gadget Fest in San Diego. And one of your colleagues, Tom Carter, actually was able to pull off a Wi-Fi call over a BlackBerry device using TrueFone. And inside the Qualcomm Faraday cage uh, auditorium, where they turn off everything, but they gave us Wi-Fi access, and the call worked. And everyone was like, how did you do that? Well, TrueFone had such sophisticated um, Wi-Fi calling technology in the 2009 era that we were able to get past the Qualcomm fortress, the impenetrable Faraday fortress. But that's the idea behind Dangerous Demos is pulling things off that just defy imagination. So if you're a developer, if you're a product manager, heck, if you're somebody with an idea and some basic coding skills and you can use the, the tools of SignalWire or FreeSwitch or any of the open source telephony stacks that are out there, WebRTC, Dangerous Demos is your place to shine. And because it's virtual, you just have to sign up and take part. Well, you're going to sign up. And then the committee, which James and I are part of, we will review the various applications. And when we do Dangerous Demos live at in August, well, you may be one of them. But everybody doesn't make the grade, do they, James? No, they don't. And in fact, Andy, <laughs> you're saying people should just sign up. 
in my experience, people <laughs> do not sign up. Yeah, I, people I, 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 have to be backed into a corner and told, oh, sorry, invited quite vigorously to perform. I, I, people, I was gonna, people don't just sign up, do they? Yes, uh, James, I was going to use the term press gang, actually, <laughs> uh, and the, the ramifications that there are of that term. And I think that's part of the reason why the crash and burn and other prizes were created is to say, look, come and participate, have a little bit of fun. You know, it's not all about the glory of winning. There, uh, there's glory in whatever level of participation. And uh, Andy was just mentioning the use of various different pieces of software. Of course, one of the things that can happen when you're doing demos with software is, that, is even when they work, they don't actually appear to be that amazing because there's not a lot of kind of physical world output. And again, another prize category created there, the SWAN prize, for when there's lots of things going on in the background and yet you don't necessarily see uh, any spectacular outworking of it. Can you think of any of your favorite SWAN um, category winners well, over the years, James or Andrew? It's got to be Tony Minasale because he has the ability to pull out of the bag uh, the most amazing demonstrations. Technically, um, well, they almost made, made me want to cry the, the, the <laughs> level of skill that was being demonstrated. But to the layman watching in the audience, they think, Oh, where's the danger in that? There's no danger. But mm. I knew oh, we, those people who uh, are on the inside know that he was coding that 30 seconds before getting up on stage. It's totally unrehearsed, completely new code, and it just works. But that's Tony for you. That is yeah, Tony. But what's, you know, what's great about this year, though, James and, and David, is the fact that you don't have to now fly to Chicago. So there's no cost to get into dangerous demos this year at all. Mm. And this also opens the door for some developers and product folks from around the world who might not be able to get a US entry visa, which has also been a hurdle. There's a lot of people around the world working on telephony and communications services and applications built upon SignalWire or FreeSwitch who, because of uh, visa restrictions coming into the US, or because of language skills or fear of getting up on stage, they never could before be in dangerous demos. So a credit to the SignalWire team and the fact we've got Phonative sponsoring this year's dangerous demos, making it possible that you now have a wider pool of smart people, risky to business type people who want to gamble on their idea and show it off to the rest of the world. So this year's Dangerous Demos may be some of the most inventive and far reaching. I was chatting with Sharon, Sharon White, who produces ClueCon and does a fantastic job every year and really is an asset to the whole ClueCon and free switch community. Registrations are way up in general for this mm. year's ClueCon. So if we can get more people, and then if James gets on his horse and starts to round up the usual suspects where he has to browbeat them into, yes, you will do a demo, won't you? We're gonna have a very competitive, dangerous demos this year, possibly the most competitive ever. Yeah, and, and by the same token, Andy, in terms of what you've mentioned, with restrictions being a lot less to actually get involved, physical travel, visas, all of that kind of stuff. By the same token, the biggest audience ever. So not, not only the largest amount of participation, but the potentially largest audience for a dangerous demo in the Indeed. history of dangerous Indeed. demos. And, a, and another really good bit of good news is that the, uh, the phonative um, uh, sponsorship is all about kind of paying for me to get there and all the all the rest of it. The fact that I'm not physically travel, ha, traveling to Chicago now means that we've got a little bit more resource, but even more prizes, haven't we, Andy? That's what I hear. I've, I've suggested to Sharon that they look at some prizes other than the embedded trophies that James sends over from the UK and Sharon hopes to get back to us soon with just what the prize pool will look like. But I made some suggestions and real prizes, not just a, a gimmicky prize or a pat on the back, but something that would be worthwhile to take some time and put together a demo. So what do you get beyond the prizes? You get bragging rights. 
and you get bragging rights within the Klukon community. You get bragging rights within the telephony world. You get to put it on your resume. You get to put it in your LinkedIn profile. These are, and then you get to look at who else has won dangerous demos the past eight years that we've been doing this. Yeah, some and of the names on the list are absolutely stellar, aren't they? Well, this, some of the names on the list, but also some of the people who haven't won, who you would think would win, it, you know, the, the list of successes sometimes makes you think, well, wow, he beat out what company? Because we've had some very large company executives show up and be more qualified for the Crash and Burn Award than the Dangerous Demo Award. Yeah. Indeed, there's been all sorts of uh, shenanigans over the years, and uh, I wanted to move the conversation slightly around to the scoring system. Because oh, the course, scoring uh, system! With, now, um, there's, a, there's something with a big arm for danger, if there ever was. Let, strangely uh, enough, it has been known for people to have a go at hacking the scoring system. Funny that. Who would think it in a real-time communications uh, event? Yeah. In, indeed, although it has to be said that it's not possible to hack everything because there is the judge's vote um, where people like yourself, James and Andy, will be you know, casting your critical eye over the participants. There's the audience uh, vote of, of the people gathered in the room. And of course, this time that will be slightly different. But the one that's most um, uh, susceptible to hacking is the voting by text. Uh, and that's the well, one that, 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 that is yeah. the audience vote, actually, David. <laughs> you know, and David, uh, in the past, it's, it's easy to, to stuff the ballot box by text because, with all the automated systems that are available to us today, um, James, I've actually thought about how to help prevent that, which is to require a mobile number at time of registration for ClueCon. To sign no, in with it. No, only no, no. that number could then be attributed to for a vote and a number could only be voted with once and should you violate it and send a second mess the text from the same one both votes are eliminated so there are ways to build some scripts to prevent the stuffing the digital stuffing of the ballot box I, I see James shaking his head there because I know that James regards the yeah, that, hacking yeah, as part yeah, of the game. Far too restrictive. I mean, we, <laughs> we, can't, we can't put things like that on there. It'll take all the fun of, of uh, people trying to hack it away from it. But, but and, and, suffice it to say that uh, each number can only vote once. And if you vote again, then it changes your vote. Well, there, there's an easy way to do this, though, James. We could, if we're using the signal wire system, we could eliminate a lot of things from within their platform. If it's not a number coming out of the SignalWire uh, account, then it goes a certain route. If it is, there's a lot of fun things that could be done, but I think half, yeah. of, the, half of the fun is everybody trying to figure out how to hack the, hack the yeah, vote. So, and, and okay, okay, well, you, you, you can't just vote using a, a multiple SignalWire accounts because no. uh, they have to be real phone numbers, which are physically somewhere. Because we have, because we're a mobile network operator, we have access to the signaling. So anybody who tries signal wire or any of the other, uh, you know, Nexmo or or any of the other similar uh, ways of sending mass SMS, uh, they'll they'll just be discounted. And yes, in and, fact, and, last time we did it, sixty percent of the votes were discounted. And don't don't forget the spirit of the participation events at ClueCon. Uh, which is summed up by something that Abby was heard to say at the last ClueCon, which was cheating was encouraged. I think oh, that was yeah, we, we, the we code like games. Of, or, we, uh, we, we like, it, like, like a little bit of imaginative engineering going on. And there's nothing better than watching the scores on the doors when <laughs> all of a sudden somebody's winning and then all of a sudden 100 votes come in for somebody else all but, at the same time. Much to be amused. I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. Oh, I'm not winning anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I like um, Andy Smith's commentary at that part of the show as well. And he comes in and, and uh, mutters a few dry observations over that. And, and as I was just saying, although that part can be hacked, that's part of the fun, you can't hack the swan 
or the um, crash and burn because those are not measured by text votes. Those are part of the judging panel. Yeah, and yeah, Andy's sitting there watching the votes come in and said, oh, look, there's another 350 votes from Alex Kinch or Cesare. <laughs> yeah, all the, it's always the, the same usual suspects are up to it. We know and they use the are. same and they use the same CPAS platforms, you know, that they you know <laughs> to do things. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do tend to. Yes. Now, so um, we... Andy uh, already mentioned this a little bit, but I just wanted to turn your attention, both of you, please, to what you think makes a good dangerous demo. So, for those people that are sat watching this, thinking, I wonder if I should participate or not. What could I demonstrate? Let's start with you, Andy. In, in your view, what makes a good dangerous demo? Something that hasn't been done before. Number two, that can meet a need that some industry sector has or people have because it's real and it could actually be a it could be a, a service that people would use or buy or deploy. And then third, it has to be imaginative. And fourth, it has to be delivered with the right degree of panache and style, much in the style of James Bodie and James Tag when they did their very first demo of a phone call on an iPhone in 2007 at the demo conference in San Diego that year, which no one had ever made a phone call on an iPhone using a voice over IP app. The app store didn't yet exist. There was no API in place. And with seconds to spare, Mr. Tag was able to complete a phone call live on stage because the old demo event did not allow for canned demos. You had to do it for real, which immediately led to the credibility of this young upstart company out of the UK amongst the Silicon Valley elite. And talk about dangerous back then, the Wi-Fi was sketchy, the <laughs> bandwidth was weak, and the product technology was truly lab level at the time, doing things that Apple didn't even permit. So when you factor all of those things in, that's the spirit. That's the, the, the internal chi, the, the guiding life force of dangerous demos is something that can be eventually practical. Well, yeah. yes. Well, all, all you, right. you know what, Andy, I, I disagree with you. Uh, dangerous demos don't always have to be practical. In fact, large numbers of them are totally impractical. Take, for example, the very, very first dangerous demo that was ever done. That was, I don't know whether you ever remember this, that was David Troy who took uh, a robotic vacuum cleaner, a Roomba, a Roomba, a Roomba. And, Roomba. and embedded asterisk. This is shows how long ago it was, but asterisk in this Roomba. And then was phone, phoned into the thing to remote control it. And then the following year, it got even more dangerous because he put a uh, a video camera on it and he was remote controlling us around the uh, conference room um, with a video camera looking up at people until he was told to, to stop it. Yes, this is um, Dallas 2000. That was definitely dangerous. Uh, when that went on, well, but this is part of the excellent of dangerous, the excellence of dangerous demos that we've got. Andy looking at some aspects, James looking at others. I was going to segue from Andy's. It must be practical to James's, not necessarily, with uh, a memory of Sylvain Boilly and his um, phone controlled space invaders, James. Yeah, that was glorious, wasn't it? So. That brings in another element that will score very highly uh, on my marking scheme, and that is a demo which involves the audience. So if you can put together a demo uh, which all the other people watching live can then join in from wherever they are on the planet, then that's likely to score quite highly. That takes a certain amount of skill to do that, and uh, you must be able to use your your tools extremely well. Mm. And I, I think <laughs> I think I'm right in saying that Sylvain's um, Space Invaders demo was the only dangerous demo in which an audience member has been given a prize by the dangerous demo. You know, in addition, uh, I think Sylvain did actually win a category that year, but he gave away a prize to the winner of the contest on his platform. 
which I thought was a clever twist. Yeah, it was clever. But we've had all kinds of things. We've had missile launchers. Remember the, the missile launcher uh, with the crosshairs with Web RTC, and uh, I was the target. Uh, that was totally impractical. And in fact, it missed me totally and rather amusingly hit Mr. Tim Panton. That'll teach him for sitting in the front row, won't it? There's a certain yeah, you've been the target. You've been the target a few times with dangerous demos. I think there was another group who was trying to hack your room key at the hotel in Chicago. It, it wasn't just trying. Doing... No, no, they, 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 they it, it was a setup. Uh, they were allegedly going to hack somebody else's room. In fact, they dragged some poor guy out of the audience to make me think that they were hacking his room. But when, in fact, they were hacking my room. And, that was uh, very cleverly done. Uh, it was. Thank goodness I didn't leave any dirty underwear out or anything like that. <laughs> my Great. room was thick and span, unlike my back cave today, which is definitely not. I'm very acutely aware of the, the mess in there. But, Yes, great days. Well, well, gentlemen, we're drawing to an end of our time together, uh, and we've covered what a dangerous demo is. We've covered what the components are that make a good dangerous demo, both from Andy and from James, and you, you two will be judging. And, of course, there may be other judges because part of the uh, excitement of it is James's ability to co-opt other people. Various members of the community have been judges. Alison, of course, the voice of Asterisk and Free Switch and very many other places has, has been a judge. Um, is there any other things that you'd like to tell people before we close our conversation on Dangerous Demos today? Um, yeah, I just love the uncertainty. Anything can happen. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes it goes horribly wrong, but it doesn't matter because we just keep on going. And as long as we end up handing out the prizes to somebody who kind of deserves it then uh then we're happy we've had we've had some amazing judging crash and burns over the year but it hasn't stopped us yet has it no there's a, there's a sorry andy carry on oh it hasn't we, we we believe in the spirit of dangerous demos anything is possible anything is doable it's all up to your imagination. And then it's up to the judges to decide how successful or unsuccessful you are. <laughs> yeah, part of the joy, joy of it is it's just not knowing what's going to come out of it. And even people who won had no idea that they were going to be doing a, a dangerous demo, you know, 30 minutes before. And, and, and further, had no idea they were going to win. As well, I, I, I just want to tell a, a brief story from uh, a dangerous demos in Astricon that I was participating in using Asterisk on a Raspberry Pi. I was having a little bit of trouble with it when one Tony Minasali showed up to help me. And I just wanted to mention that as a sign of the community that happens because Tony was fiddling about on this Raspberry Pi with me to try and get it working in time for the demos. So that was... Uh, the free switch project and the asterisk project working together there in harmony so all sorts of positive things come out of the dangerous demos yeah well Lovely. thank you very much well sorry thank you, James. David. yeah thank it's you, been David, for, for asking us on and i'm sure it will be uh wonderful and if you are if you have put your name down uh to attend uh glucon this year then do not be surprised if you get a phone call out of the blue uh, asking you to uh, do something for Dangerous Demos. The excitement mounts as we come towards it. And uh, we will make sure that people know how they can register and get involved with the Dangerous Demos. But uh, now it only remains for me to say thank you very much, James. And Andy, thank you very much for coming along to discuss Dangerous Demos today. Thank you, David. All the best.